Hey everyone, welcome to Skills Build Training YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about MS Project 2019 and this video is a MS Project 2019 tutorial for beginners. So let's get started. Microsoft Project is a project management software made for project managers so that they can control their projects. Depending upon your plan, Microsoft Project lets you plan projects, assign tasks, manage resources, and make reports, and more. It offers a full plate of services. First, let's talk about the info section. As you can see, I am here in the MS Project office. I am in the part which is called Info. The info you will see that you can manage your accounts and you get here some information about your project. One important thing is it will tell you what is the start and finish date of the project. It will show you calendar and the calendar defines as the timing which means that you are working from 11 to 2 in the afternoon, you don't work over the week, something like that. Now, let's talk about accounts. In account, you can change the office theme, background, and it tells you about the connected services. You will get all user information from here. Now, let's talk about open. You can open files that you have, and you can also browse your hard drive. So click on browse and from here you can go to anywhere in your drive like desktop and here if I click I would open up my FYP or final year project file. So when I open it I see the data here and that's how you successfully open a project. Whenever we talk about a project there is a cost associated with it. And the cost has to be in some specific currency. So in order to change the currency, go to options. And then you need to go to the display. And in the display, you see here a symbol, which is RS. So I'll change my currency. So I'll go and select USD, which is US dollar. Uh, which is a standard currency for all the uh, projects okay around the world um, some projects could be in your native currency as well so if you want to change it you could do so here you see the decimal di digits you can um, make them one or two and here you can see the placement you you want to place the dollar sign before the number or after the number um, you could do so okay so these are just placements. After choosing your specific instructions or the method, you just go and click OK. And that's how your currency will be selected. Now, let's talk about the new option. By clicking on new file, here you have different options. You have blank project, you have a new from existing project, you have a new from Excel workbook, you have a new from SharePoint task list. I would open up the blank project. I'll click on it. And here you can see that I have a project. I see task, I see duration, start, finish, and predecessors. I'll explain to you all of that in a while. In the middle, you find here what we call timelines. Timeline is something really interesting to give an overview of your project and is one point that you can use to do presentations of your project. Further, I will go back to the file option here and here are some options that I want you to be aware of. Within schedule one, you see that we start on Monday. We can start off uh, the working time, the number of hours and hours per day, hours per week. You can change these options which is important to know that you can't change them later. It would be very difficult to change if you want to change them later. Hit OK. 
and now they have been changed. So let's talk about removing the timeline. I can remove the timeline. Therefore, for this, you have to go into the view and you can see here that you can take away the timeline. Let's talk about the task. So now we are ready to enter some tasks. First task is to enter the project name. Once here, uh, I'm going to write here the project name as game and then in a project you enter a phase. So first phase of project is usually initiation. So in the initiation phase, I do a project proposal and once I give the project proposal, I wait for the project approval. Okay. So in the plan, the next phase is the plan, of course, after initiation. And in the plan, I will do macro planning and I will also do the detailed planning. Now, I am ready to enter the phase which we call execution or realization or integration. You can call them anything. In this part, we do most of the work. So we usually start with what we call concept and into the concept it's when we do the design of renovation, design of home for example or design of your house um, or maybe you are building a software. So it defines basically the architecture of the software. So concept is very important. After that you enter into the development and the building phase that I have just written. After that, we will have some integration work and the integration work, once it is done, then you're gonna have a validation or testing sort of phase. We are now ready to deliver the product or the services or goods. At the end of the project, it's good to have what we call closing. Closing is a time when you summarize what happened in the project to improve what you would do in the project. As you can see, we have defined tasks that are relevant to almost all kind of projects. So nevertheless, here I have uh, my project which is called game and it intakes all the under tasks. So I will show this in one way where the, dependent, where the dependencies of all these tasks of the game um, are dependent. So I'll select all the tasks. I go into task here. You can see I have an indentation right here. So what I will do, I will indent my task. You see my project is now composed of some tasks right here uh, initiation uh, is, is composed of project proposal and project approval or excuse me the project approval and the project proposal is composed of initiation um, detail plan and macro plan is composed of plan and uh, similarly the execution and then we have uh, the design Okay, so you got the point, right? So that's how you make a composition of the multiple tasks uh, with one task, one major task. So now let's talk about the project milestone. As you can see, I have a summary task of the project, which is composed of four different summary tasks. To complete them, I will add some specific duration to the task. So the project proposal, uh, it would take two weeks and the project approval, it would take one day. So the idea is that some tasks of the project would take weeks and some tasks of the project would take uh, days. And you might have noticed that the time is updated in front of the project. So as the different tasks are taking days or weeks based on that the project duration is also been updated so now let's take a look at the right side here we have a clear blue bar that have appeared 
they are representing the duration of the work and the ones with the zero or the like the uh, diamond sign they are representing the power or take of taking a decision or they are representing that it's taking a decision okay so this is what we call a milestone and you also have a date you know right after the diamond sign sign so now let's talk about the give sequence give some sequence to the task so for that i will select the task which are sequential which means that one cannot start until the other has finished so do the same with the rest of the tasks and we see that all the tasks are one after the other so you can select all the tasks and you can go here uh, and click on link the selected task and here you can see that now the tasks have been linked and here you see the date and uh, the day uh, on each task when it would start and when it would complete so you can also select the option here uh, you can select like the uh, auto and the manual task selection so if you uh, if you see the dark blue uh, here it means that the task is auto scheduled if you see the light scheduled or light blue it means that it is manually scheduled so now take a look at the right side we do have a graph right but the thing is that this graph we have to scroll like this and then we are able to view it the thing is that we can fit this graph to our screen and for that we would go to the view and then would click on entire project and here you can see that now the graph has been fit according to our screen now let's talk about linking task with predecessor here you can see that I have the closing and in the closing I could say that I want the closing to be sequential to all of that so here you can see that I have an extra column which is predecessors and you can see that project approval have three as its predecessor so on three we have project proposal which means that if we do not have a project proposal we won't have any project approval right so the project proposal step has to be completed in order to get to the project approval similarly uh, we have the detail plan which is which has six in its predecessor which means that we cannot go to the detail plan if the macro plan has not been completed similarly if we come to the last we have the closing meeting uh, which has a predecessor of 15 uh, which is closing itself and the closing has a predecessor 13 which is testing and validation so now um, let me talk to you about the project start date you can change it basically if you want so let's say that we want to start the project but something came up and we started the project late so for that move to the project start date so go to the project go to the move project and then um, here you can change the date and uh, let's say I change it to 8 march or 9 8 and then 2021 so if i hit okay and then you can see that the project starting date has been successfully changed and if i go to the project information i could view it now let's talk about resources we need some resources to work on this project so for that go to the task select other views select resource sheet and here we have a table in which we have a resource name so i will enter resource name so for example first one is project manager we do need that and then uh, we have the stakeholders stakeholders are your boss your department manager it could be you and then we have the engineer one then we have engineer two and then we have engineer three and then finally we have a tester 
okay so these are all the resources involved in the project so i can set their um now i if i go here and i if i click on it i could see the gantt chart okay and here i can assign different resources to different phases in the project we have assigned the resources now let's talk about the most important thing in the project which is essentially the cost of it so go back to the resource sheet and here you can um, after going back to the resource sheet you can add the cost of each resource so for example i would add 100 dollars for the project manager stakeholder would take 150 engineer one would take 200 and uh, engineer three would take 180 and tester would also take 100 dollars per hour so now uh, it would calculate the cost based on the number of hours that the project would take you go back there okay here to the gantt chart and here you can add a new column here and that column would be the cost okay here you can see that automatically all the cost has appeared here according to the resources that we have assigned to each phase and the total cost here is 278,400 US dollars and if you have selected another currency you would have your currency here so now let's talk about reports so for that go to reports and go to the section report overview from the dashboards we already have a report and that is showing a complete cost of 278,400 US dollars it also shows the cost status cost status for top level tasks okay and you can see here the percentage completion we can also see go to the report dashboards and then go to work overview and here you can see that the remaining work is shown in the orange the actual work is shown in blue and we also have the baseline work which is kind of gray so now let's talk about baseline the project is ready and we are going to take a picture that how the project is going to happen this is going to be our reference and we call it baseline so for this go into the project and once you go into the project click on set baseline and then click on leave as it is and then hit ok to see the baseline right click on gantt chart show slash hide bar style click on that and then you will see last saved baseline click on it you can see that the gray bars have appeared here below they are showing that how the project will move forward so now let's talk about tracking we can track our task which means that we can track that how much work is done and how much is remaining you can do that in percentage which is a, a formal and a great way so there are two ways to track the project task first way is that you select the task you want to set percentage of go into task and select some of the percentage bars you can see on the top here we have a zero percent twenty five percent fifty percent you can select these bars to assign the task completion uh, to any task so this is a real handy way another way to do that is a manual way so for that double click on any task you see this window here here you see the option percentage complete so from here you can click on the, any of the things okay and uh, you can see that you can make it move up and make it move down so now we are on the 50 percent and uh, from here once you set the percentage after increasing decreasing you can click ok and you are all done so while we were completing the tracking all the tasks that are completed they are ticked now we are going to look into another chart which is tracking chart so for that click on the gantt chart and then you would click on the tracking gantt 
when you click on it here you can see the tracking chart right here you can fit it on the screen so for that uh, you go to view and then you go to the entire project click on it and now you can see the tracking chart you can see that some tasks are 100% complete some are 0% one is 71% 81% 79 and 50% so that's how you create a tracking chart so that's it thank you so much for watching do not forget to subscribe to our channel to advance your IT career.